What did I say? Everybody, welcome to another edition of the Lux Edition, the show where we love to dig deep into pop culture. As always, my name is Bill Seabold, and I'm here with Mr. Can you blow that smoke out and say your name at the same time? You're supposed to say my name. All right. The Can't Muffler Man. Sure. Oh, that's right. You changed your name. You're the Muffler Man. <laughs> You're the Muffler. He fixes mufflers now, people. <laughs> that was from our, our last episode. But before we talk about that, because I'm curious what the feedback was on that. Because you introduced me to something I've never heard of in my life. So I'm, I'm sure other people were like, what the fuck is he up to? But joining us today is Mr. Peter Anthony. How are you, sir? Good. Life's great, man. Uh, on a roll with the uh, Indiegogo and the promoting. Uh, life's good. That's right. So, Peter, you've been on the show with us before. Peter is the writer and director of Roseblood, the new Friday the 13th fan film, which is based on, it, well, it's, it's your own story based on a sequel well, it's not based on anything. You're you're making it up. So it's really it's based on the far wall. It, it is. It is based on. It's basically a continuation of seven. Is the way I'm seeing it. So yeah. that's really cool. You wrote this whole story. You directed this story. And when's it come out? Uh, November. If you go to the premiere, which you motherfuckers better, it's uh, <laughs> it's November 28th. Uh, but for you two, for like the rest of the world, it'll be the night of the 29th. So that's a Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern. All right. Exactly. I'll be drinking then because either it's going to be like everyone's going to love it or people aren't going to like it. And I'll just jump right out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's not going to like it. The, 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 oh, there's haters, man. Ask Casey. There's haters. Really? This oh, is, my God. Yeah. This, this yeah. fandom loves all Jason stuff. Well, there's people that are, see it as competition. There's some people who just hate the fact that you're doing it. They're like, well, I'd make one better. And I'm like, well, okay, well, then do it. Like, none of us care and none of us would be mad. We're all just doing our own thing. You know, I mean, you look at the trailer. One trailer has 50-something dislikes, and the other one has 30-something dislikes. It's just, dude, half the people believe in God, half the people don't. Half the people love the president, half the people don't. So it's just the way it is, you know? I, look, I think the internet's full of hate because whoever goes, you know, oh, I want to write a really nice thing. Nobody right. wants to write nice things. It's always I agree. a bad review that people want to put online, it seems. It, it's like a Yelp review. If you went somewhere and you loved it, you just go again. You don't write nothing. Yeah. You My, know? I love that people are saying, I could have done it better. You know, we yeah, sometimes we laugh at our comments because it's like, Oh, these guys, they're terrible. It's like, no, we do our show for us. We do our right. show for people who are like us. It's not there <laughs> for everybody. Yeah, I, I get mad. Too. I'm like, really? You could have got Lar Park Lincoln and Terry and Kevin, and you could have paid for all that. You could have easily done that. Why wouldn't you? You know? <laughs> well, your trailer's out. So one of the, you guys, you did something really cool that I, I just, I wasn't expecting at the end. Mm -hmm. So when we first talked, you didn't, uh, and I'll let you talk about what you did because I don't know what's a secret and what's not. So when we first talked a couple, you know, was it two months ago, Casey? You didn't even drop that name. So when he popped into the, the scene, I was like, that's awesome. You want the inside scoop? Yeah. Casey, you never saw him, right? No. We closed the set and we like snuck him in, like dressed differently. But nobody was allowed to be on set except for like vital cast. You know what I'm saying? A vital crew and, and, and Lar. It was the only cast. And I was actually in that room with them when they were doing it, just like I was with Terry and Lar. 
but that scene was supposed to be a post credit scene. So I was like, that's going to be a post credit scene. The movie's going to end. Then we're going to go to Lar and do all that. And then we didn't I didn't say who it is. We're talking about Kevin Spiritus. Who I'm sorry, Kevin Spiritus, Kevin Spiritus, which is plays Nick from part seven comes in. And if you think about it, I gave away it probably too much with the trailers. I give away that Lar battles Jason. I give away that Kevin Spiritus is back. I give away a lot of things, but what's a lot of people don't know is there's more secrets and there's one huge secret, which we were keeping under wraps until it's released. But it's still, there's so much story driven. Like I just went through the cuts. I'm on the third cut of the film. It's man, it's really, I love that it's a story driven film that it's just like, cause it's hard even with regular films, but especially fan films to like, like the characters, you know, cause you, you just don't care. You're almost throwaway characters. So I'm really, really, really trying to make people uh, like the character so that when events occur, it matters, you know? Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that I, I noticed about the new, well, I call it the new Friday, the 13th, the one, the remake that came out. Right. 2009. Movie? Yeah, yeah, it actually seems like it was more recent than that. But that movie to me, I, I didn't think that one worked. I thought that was a little bit too slick. And I think what you need out of these movies is that sort of feel of the time when you saw these movies. And when right. I saw your trailer, I was like, oh, he's kind of like thinking that way. You know, you didn't try to yeah. modernize it. In, in my mind, at least what I saw, it looked like a good traditional Friday the 13th movie. Thanks. It's weird because it is and it isn't. Uh, and it was 2009 was the last one, Derek Mears. It's just been so so long you don't realize that it's been 12 years since the last one. It's weird because mine's different. I, mean, I don't have any sex. I don't have any drugs. I don't have any nudity. There's no campers. It's not at the lake. Really? It, you know? So, I mean, that that's a big risk, man, because some people won't like that. That's why the whole character story has got to be driven. You know, that's why I, I grab multiple people from multiple ones and make it really interesting and build this whole dynamic for, for an ending. I mean, the last 15 minutes is fucking ape shit. So um, th we're hoping that you're really vested in it and then the ending happens like that. But I know what you're saying. That our, I think Jason did a great job with the look, you know, yeah. and Terry and Lar gives that authentic feel, you know? But I'm sure it's you too. I mean, you're you're directing, you're editing. That's tone. You yeah, know, it's the same characteristics in terms of the 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 tropes that are in most of the Jason movies. That, yeah, that's okay. 100%. I think we're all right with that. I think it's, it's we want to capture that. We want to see that tone that we're used to. Yeah, I mean, as far as props and stuff, I don't know if Casey saw them all. As far as the wall props, uh, yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, there's a certain scene in 1988 that I actually like recreated. I mean, down to the the picture frames, down to everything on the wall. So like, and I was pretty big on like from those 80s moments, like having things that are from the 80s. And I try to give it a whole 80s vibe because I'm 45. So I figured it'd be kind of cool to see things when we grew up, you know? Yeah, I, in one scene, I am like, I spent so much time and money to make that scene look like you were in the exact room in 1988. And it's hard because, I mean, my film is kind of bland because you're you're in these white wall rooms. You know what I'm saying? So like, I did that on purpose. I was going for like a... Remember the Matrix when he goes and talks to the, the engineer and it's just all white and it's just him? Mm -hmm. That's kind of like what I was doing. And then the, the color scheme was Star Wars. So in the first Star Wars, it's sand color everywhere. The second one is, is snow, white. And the third one's all green with the forest Endor and all that. And that's kind of what I was doing. The military is green. Your eyes just automatically try to pick up things. Tina is, is pink, lovable, innocent. Rose is red, right? And then the scientists are all white. They're plain. They don't really matter. They're like pawns in there. The fast team is black. Jason's grayscale. The Duke is multiple colors because he doesn't fit in any single scenario. You get it? I really spent a lot of time. With, not most people won't care or no, but I, that, I tried to make it seem that way. I get you know? it right on. I mean, they, it, it, we used to have symbolism in these movies. Like even the first Dawn of the Dead, right? When Dawn of the Dead came out, that was a political movie. There was symbolism all yeah. over it in a horror movie. Yeah, so uh, the you, fact that the fact that a black man was telling a white man what to do and he was the lead, that was humongous. Night of the Living Dead, I mean. That was humongous, you know? Yeah. That was yeah. a big thing. Yeah. 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 Casey, did, were you going to say something? Yeah, some, just going back to the to that room that you're talking about, Peter, watching everybody, when we were cleaning up, like, in between scenes, like, everybody was like, oh, th this shit's awesome. Like, everybody yeah. loved all the stuff that you had in that room. It's just, it is crazy. And some of the pictures that you post in our group chat with everyone in the cast and crew, just yeah. of like the exact replicas of the things that you have in the movie. It's just, it's awesome. Yeah. I probably, a lot of people won't know, but in the behind the scenes, we're going to show a little more of it. I think it'd be cool. And I think it'll help to add to the rewatchability of the film. You know what I'm saying? You're like, Oh, okay. That that's what that is. And that's what that was. And so on and so forth. And there's, there's a lot of like 
hints in the movie about the ending. Like throughout the whole movie, there's these little hints and no one even knows, not even some of the cast knows. And this guy says something, you know, and you're like, oh, okay, that's that. And then at the end of the movie, you're like, oh, we, he was telling us all along what that was. So that there's multiple things. There's references to to games and cards, you know, about playing your cards, right? Just like the Fastian plays cards and Duke and Julian plays cards and he calls Tina the queen. And there's so many references like that that I try to like use in the verbiage throughout the whole film. That How'd you learn how to do all that? Like that is that is stuff that is missing from movies today. Like, dude, I never wrote before. I just, I don't know. I just, I think the passion of the Friday 13th is like makes it easier. Like if you told me to go write some brand new thing on something, I'd probably struggle with that. But when it's a Friday 13th thing, it's like, you know, symbolism. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm an old school rapper, believe it or not. So like symbolism and words, like recognition and all that kind of always came easier for me. So like, I always try to just implement that. Like, what would they be doing? Playing cards. Well, how would they, if they're playing cards, how would they, how could we use that? Well, Tina's the queen of hearts. You know what I'm saying? She's pure. So on is card game with the fast team. You probably don't know that yet, but they, they have a card game also. So on and so forth. It's, it's like a pawn. You know, it's, it's like a game. And, and the general is like pushing everyone to do what he wants. That's a game. So on and so forth. It's along, along those lines. Yeah. I but I didn't, I didn't learn. I just, I just wrote it uh, out of nowhere. But, I, you know, I would send it to Riley and, and Jason and Sean and uh, Cody Newton. and be like, hey, what do you think of this? And I'm like, dude, that's really good. And then some people would say, tweak this, tweak that. You know, the other thing, too, when you're writing, I noticed, it's stupid. You start to write, like, Casey, put down the milk, you know, and then Joey, shut up. And then you're like, Jason's like, no one talks like that in real life. They just say what it is. They don't preface it with the guy's name first. And I'm like, yeah, you're fucking right. So <laughs> things like that I learned as I went. And even now, dude, like, when I look back, I'm doing the edits and stuff. I'm so pissed about so many things. Like, I realized, you're a writer, so I realized that writing and screenplay is two totally fucking different things. You know, you could say, this is going to happen. Well, where? How's he looking? How does he enter the room? And, like, all that is a deal, you know? So shoot him from the right 50-50, you know? Like, all that stuff is, I learned a lot more. I made a lot of mistakes that I would have changed looking back now as far as screenplay and how things pan out. But that's okay. I mean, what, yeah. I, I played music, too, and, and the, the old saying is, a composition is never done. You just run right. out of time. Who makes their first song or writes their first um, Steven Spielberg, his first I'm sure he looks back at his first film and hates like 90% of it. Yeah, he could yeah. probably make every single mistake in it and none of us ever noticed. Right. He's like, exactly. Exactly. You have to make mistakes, mistakes to get better. It's the way it goes. That's right. Yeah. yeah. But failure is your best teacher. Correct. Yeah. Look at us. We are being, being very positive today. What's up with Casey? Casey, what's up with the hair there, bro? Look like you're selling cars. That's what it, that's what it that's what the deal is. I need a, I need to fly back to Pennsylvania and get a haircut. Where are you now? Tallahassee, bro. Are you live in Tallahassee? Yeah, moved down here uh, June no July nineteenth. I didn't know that. Yeah. Why'd well, you move down there? Family stuff. Oh. Got rid of a big house in uh, Pennsylvania and Warren's. Yes. Downsized. Tallahassee. Uh, Roy Jones Jr. from around there, isn't he? I'm not sure. Tallahassee. You're on the Panhandle. Yeah. Yeah, he's from Panama City. What, what's okay. on the what is that? Where on the Panhandle? Yeah, Pensacola, Panama City. That's all over there. I think he's from Pensacola or Panama City. Roy Jones Jr. He's one of my favorite boxers. I watched him box a couple of times. Nice. Well, Tyson's my number one. That way, that's why I love that fight. But it was bullshit. Yeah. Tyson was told not to go to the head. It was the whole bunch of things. Was, they both had belts for a tie, a fucking tie. Tyson killed yeah. them. Dude, <laughs> you know? I love yeah. that whole thing. That whole thing at the end, they uh, they changed the decision at the end because oh, they, 100%. that yeah. was that was one hundred percent Tyson. They, they had two belts for a tie. Who the fuck does that? <laughs> you know, it's just did you Tyson get pissed at first? Then the guy comes over and talks to him, and he kind of chills out and stuff. I was like, you. Roy Jones didn't win one round, but let's say you give him one round, so seven to one. People had it four four. Are you fucking kidding me? You know, like it's, I hate the whole fakeness of today, the world now. You know, it just bothers the shit out of me. I saw him hit to the head, and then I, I you saw him like calm down, like you're like you're not supposed to hit to the head. It's an extra, yeah. you know. Yeah, I'm like forget it. It's just bothers me. Actually, they just announced today that he's supposed to. I, I think Lennox Lewis, possibly Tyson. I think so. Another like an exhibition type deal. But same thing. I'm if, almost as positive. They, that's what I read. Don't quote me on they, that. I've, as long as they I've get been the wrong before. As long as they get the hit and and there's a real judge and a real winner and not this bullshit that I'm because because the, the the last fight with uh, Tyrone Woodley and Paul that was a real fight. That was real judges, yeah. real like like make it like that. You know, 
Yeah, what do you think of what do you think of him, Jake Paul? He's great, dude. You know, I think, he's fucking, I think yeah. he's shutting everybody up. Yeah, Pe- he's people going out to be a boxer, and he wants to. That's what he right. wants to do, and he's training to do it, and he's proving everybody that he can do it. Tyrone Woodley is a phenomenal athlete. He's a two-time college wrestling champion. He's going in the Hall of Fame for UFC. He's a freak athlete. He's still ing- I mean, he's, he kind of lost that edge. If you watch UFC, the last like four or five fights, he doesn't that aggressive, and he wasn't aggressive in that fight at all. But it was so weird how he like got shitty with him after and like wants a rematch and everything like that. I'm like, you didn't really deserve it. It wasn't even that great. You know what I'm saying? So, but I, you got to give credit as much as I don't, those guys could. Some people think they're clowns, which they are. You're going to get in there with Floyd Mayweather. You're going to get in there with Tyrone Woodley. That's balls, man. You know? Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. All right. Let's get back to uh, Friday yeah. the 13th stuff here. How, <laughs> how did I had you? I no idea what you were talking about. I'm, I'm thinking the last guy I saw Mike Tyson fight was Glass Joe on a Nintendo back in 1984. <laughs> <laughs> There was a nice write-up in uh, Bloody Disgusting, right, about your fan film about Roseblood. How does yeah, something like that happen, dude? I, I I never even I've always contacted those guys back even the Vengeance days, and uh, it's it's nothing even against them. I'm so grateful that they did that and beyond. But like a lot of those Fangoria, all them, they won't really talk about fan films. It's not their thing. So um, I, I never did anything. I, I I never said anything about Roseblood. It must have just been a Lar thing. And then it, it went over there, and they talked about Laura. They talked about my film. They put my Indiegogo link on there. So uh, that was phenomenal. I, I can't thank them enough. I love the write up. I, I loved all that. That really got us. It shot up thousands of views on the on the on the trailer. We shot up a couple grand on the Indiegogo. So that was what an honor that is. You know, wow. why yeah. don't the others like to talk about fan films? Is it just like it's not in the cinemas, or you know, it's not legitimate in their mind? I mean, what's the, what's the deal there? It's twenty twenty one. Like. Everything's right. changed. Why would I, they I, think, I think there's two parts. One, it's not cinema, right? Uh, and then two, the fans are real. Some of the fans are real assholes. And you'll, you'll see it even on uh, my posts, other posts. They're like, this isn't a real film. Why are we talking about this? It's stupid. Just think about people who don't know fan films or not from that thing. They think it's some idiot in their backyard doing something. Why are they getting praise? They're not a real film. So on. So I think like when they look at their viewership, and they're like, oh, we're pissing this section off. I think that's a deterrent also. No, there better wake up. I mean, right now people right. are seeing entertainment from like 12 year old right. talking about their lives and everybody's tuning in to watch like entertainment is different to people. So right. to say what you made is not a film. That's stupid. Yeah. Right. It wasn't a commercially released film. Absolutely. Right. film. The 30 seconds that I'm in your movie really opened my eyes to all of these different fan films. Like I had heard of vengeance before, of course, uh, that's one of the more popular you know, Friday the 13th fan films, but like I saw, I told Bill, we should do an episode like all on just talking about these different fan films. There's like, I'm, I watched one the other day. It was Superman versus or Superman meets Batman. I watched the great Punisher one with the original Punisher actor from like the original movie. Um, there's Dolph just, Lundgren? no, no, the Dolph was the Punisher who Bill, what we talked about this before, Bill, what was the, you're going way back to the original Punisher. I mean, it was uh, the guy who was in Hung. Yeah. Yeah. It's a- the, the first, unless I'm crazy, the first Punisher movie was in the 80s, Dolph Lundgren. Oh, shit. That's right. You're talking about Dolph Lundgren being the hero. See, oh. Casey, this goes way back. Yeah. It's like way back when Marvel was a different Marvel. And like, yeah, Dolph Lundgren played the but Punisher. But they made a movie? They didn't make a movie before that one, right? No. I didn't even right. know that about the. the- yeah. Yeah. They made a shitty Captain America back then. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they made a they made a Fantastic Four that was so terrible they never released it. Yeah, we talked about yeah, that. Yeah, we talked yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. They showed the, the fucking thing. He's all like orangey and like foamy and shit. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> the Punisher that I'm talking about was made in uh, 2004, and it was with Thomas Jane. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, then there's one after that, Punisher Warzone. Oh, really? Don't get me going, bro. Huge Punisher <laughs> fan. I literally wanted... This is how fucked up I am. I literally wanted to win the lotto and get money and go out and punish people. Like, kill them. Like, that's... what. If, man, if I won it right now, I'd still think about it. Like, all these scumbags and pedophiles. This when we air this? <laughs> yeah. or this yeah. a- like, 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 all these pedophiles and all these scumbags and pieces of shit. I would just go around and kill them. I always loved the Punisher. I had every single comic of his when I was a kid, all the way up till... Like after high school, like ninety nine, uh, I had all the Infinity Wars from Marvel. That that was a big thing because I remember how awesome that was. Like everybody crossed over and everything. So um, 
Punisher was always one of my favorite of all time because he was real. You know what I'm saying? And he was badass. Yeah. And yeah, f- fuck yeah, I feel like well, fired up. Ever- that's a great idea, Peter. But we, you know, we love you and we want you to stick around. So don't don't do that. What about Punisher on Netflix, dude? That was unbelievable. That was good. Did you see in um, Daredevil? So Daredevil season two, episode seven, when the Punisher kills everyone in jail. Did you see that? Yeah, I think so. He slits the one guy's throat, and his face lands on his white shirt, and nobody sees this. And when he takes the guy off and throws him and stands up, it's the Punisher. Symbol. Yeah, yep, I remember. That. Yeah, dude. So, yeah. <laughs> then season season one and season two, man, he's he's a little guy, but he was bad ass, man, in those shows. Yeah, yeah, the, and that's just something that they got rid of, right? The, all those. Yeah, they didn't want. I don't know why they didn't want to bring that back. That was incredibly successful and awesome. Yeah, they were all good. Yeah. So anyway, the fan film. This it's a short Punisher fan film with this Thomas Jane, uh, Ron Perlman's in it. He plays like what convenience store clerk. It's awesome. You it's better send awesome. that shit to me, dude. I will. I will. Well, it's not even a real sequel, but it's a fan made sequel, and people respect yeah. it and love it. Well, well, Bill, the the original like thing of fan film world was a Star Trek film do you understand do you know the history on this not star trek i would have thought you'd say star wars because no nope. star, star trek they raised 3.2 million dollars or something and they got some of the original cast and then the studio got all pissed off and said no 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 here's the rules and here's the limits of what you could do and they took their money back oh. so and now it's like you can only make fifty thousand dollars per 30 minutes you can like you have to show pro- you can't show profit. You got to do all these other things. Yada yada yada. Yeah, so we had to talk uh, about that on the but, last one. About Star that. Trek. If you look it up, that was the first of everything that caused every rule. Like they're the ones that like hit it out of the park. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Are you you, are you guys fans of Friday Thirteenth? Like part four, you know the series. Mm-hmm. Do you remember when he was Tom when Tommy was a boy and he had the Zaxxon hat thing on? I just got it today. Nice. See it? Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's Zaxxon, that's what he had on when he was yeah, playing yeah, the game. Corey Feldman playing, wearing that for sure. Yeah. I just got you're playing it's Zaxxon, the, 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 the 8 bit game? That's a creature from Zaxxon? They call that Zaxxon. There's not really a name for it. Tommy just made it, but he's playing Zaxxon on the something AMS 400 when, when he's playing it. There's people who went out and bought that system just to have in their room with the Zaxxon game on. Oh. Yeah, crazy. Who made that? Is it like a custom make or? Is and then Tim King bad? made it. T- Tim King made it. He j- I just opened it in the box and brought it up here because I gave no one knows this, but I have a Pamela head. I just gave it away for a fan film. The guy's going to use it because it's a pretty good Pamela head. So I threw the Zaxxon in there for now. Right on. Yeah. Awesome. Shit, I never do that. You taught me something. I didn't know that was called Zaxxon. But I do yeah. remember the monster because I remember thinking that monster looked a hell of a lot like the the cantina guys in, in Star Wars. And that's how yeah. I remember the, the look. It's kind of like, um, if you remember probably the 13th Part 3, Shelly wears a clear mask with a little rouge on it. Mm-hmm. It's called the Shelly mask because what the fuck? There's nothing else to call it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, look at this guy smoking over there. Look at him. He just fucking can't stop. You want to get into some of these fan questions? I got a bunch of them. Now Shoot. you know why he left Pennsylvania. He's on the fucking run. <laughs> He's on the run. Well, hold on. Uh, Casey, I wanted to talk to you for a second if I could grab yeah. the mic. What did you, what did you, fuck yeah. What did you think about seeing yourself? In a Friday the 13th fan film trailer and know it was you. Because you were pretty quiet about it. I would have been all over that. But you didn't really say anything. But how did that feel? Well, I didn't want to. I didn't know if I, you know, right. could say right. anything. But, yeah, that was me. And I got my my kill. Well, there I do do a little something else that wasn't in the trailer. But, yeah, I mean, it's fucking awesome, dude. <laughs> like, yeah. It's fucking you know, everyone great. that I talk to, I'm like, you know, the movie that I'm going to be in, right? You know. <laughs> <laughs> you show the family the trailer? With you? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's great, yeah. We'll dude. pop the trailer in here too for everyone to see because both of them. Because actually, the last time we talked to you, I don't think the first one was even done yet. I only exist because of you. It doesn't fit, does it, Tina? Huh. Well, one word that comes to mind that does. Um, how about manifest? <laughs> as, as the troubled teenager manifested a, a demon right before our eyes, I bet that one works fine. 
but her name is Rose. She's the new blood around here. We think her control over gravity is ten times that of Shepard. <laughs> it's showtime, Red. The General found her. She's like you in some ways, but she is something that you and I have never seen before. Our goal is to subdue your mass friend, <laughs> if he truly exists. Where's your monster now? You fixed it? How? Why? You have no idea what you're dealing with. How many times have I told you? Call me Duke. The girls, they need you, especially Tina. The girls are on their own. I don't play God here, Julian. Neither do you. Complete the session, Tina. I hate you! Tina. I just wish you would go away! Tina! Talk to me. What did you think? I was just gonna send you back? What did you think of the second trailer? I thought it was awesome, man. I mean, it's it's intense. Good, thanks. It's so yeah, much pressure. I love it, man. It's it's fucking great. You know, all those surprises, the different surprises. It, it, you got everybody questioning uh, what the Bad News Cruise is doing. Right. Everybody the thinks one. he got killed in the in you know the original one. The the marketing behind that is, I told everyone what the deal was. I'm like, well, they're gonna think he's dead. And they're like, well, they're gonna ask a bunch of questions. Good. Then there's right. going to keep the whole momentum and the mystery alive, going to make you go see it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Actually, so that's one of the, uh, it's just a stupid fan question we got from some dude on Reddit. Oh, great. Uh, we'll never write it another fucking question. Nice job. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut that. We'll cut that out. Tron Funkin Blow. Seeing as Terry Kaiser died in a new blood, will he be playing Dr. Cruz or reprising his famous role as Bernie from Weekend at Bernie's? Oh, a little sarcasm slash wit in that question, Tron. <laughs> if you watch trailer two, and if you listen to the beginning, it really gives you a great answer to that. Uh, if So when you guys play trailer two, the beginning, there's a black screen, and all you hear is Dr. Cruz talking. So that's as much as I can give away. But if you if you can dissect that, you can figure out a good idea of what's going on. You know, And then, obviously, we're not morons. We obviously know that in part seven he died, so we wouldn't, you know, like some people are like, well, don't you know? Of course I fucking know, you know. So <laughs> I was writing, I just forgot the guy's dead. So, so, so um, but I, but I understand because as a fan, I would say the same thing. So I'm not really knocking those fans, but don't say like I don't know, like I, I just forgot about it, you know. So um, it, it's well, I think it, I hope it's well written enough to make sense. And oh, okay, I see now when when the fan come, when the movie comes out. Speaking of Terry Kaiser, man, I watched a recent interview with you guys, with you and uh, Terry Kaiser and Kevin Kevin Spiritus. That was awesome. That guy at eighty, well, he's eighty two, right? Eight, he might be eighty three now. October, I think he turns eighty three. The energy that he has and his oh, like his laughter is so contagious. And he's is. like, you guys think I smoke a lot of pot. Terry Kaiser is constantly just cigarette after cigarette. Well, light another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chain smoker. Crazy, crazy. You know what's so crazy? You're watching that. He, he we're talking about directing or whatever, right? And then it kind of goes somewhere else. And then he tells that story about Paul Newman. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, so he's talking about Paul Newman, right? He said, Paul Newman, crazy, and, you know, he, he's not scared to go under the table. And I'm like, this is a great Paul Newman story. And then he, like, semi-equates it to me or or mentions my name in the same, like, uh, paragraph as him. He's like, and P Peter Anthony is the same thing. He's not scared to go on the table. And he listens to everyone. If you go back and you watch that, zoom in on me, dude. I'm about as emotional as you can get. 
So much so that I had to clear my throat that I grabbed my drink to drink because I didn't know he was going to say that. I thought he was just talking about Paul Newman. And then he's like, yeah, you, just like you. I'm like, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I told my parents all about it and everything. Oh, man. Yeah, it was great. He, he's such a class act. Dude, he's like a guy's guy, too. He's awesome. I didn't realize that he trained with uh, Lee Strasberg, yep. right? I can't yeah. like I didn't know any of that stuff when he was telling that story. It's just, yeah, he's done a ton of stuff, dude. He was on Three's Company, he was on the Golden Girls, he was you know Weekend at Bernie's, Friday Thirteen Part Seven. He's like theatrically tra trained. He's he's awesome. You know what? I would never want to be. I would never want to be him older and getting like tired and like wanting to always lay down because then everyone was going to be like. Now you're burning. Now you're fucking burning. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. probably full of energy. So nobody goes, Wow, you're just like your character, Burn. Dude, he has a lot of energy for sure. And, and he lives in this awesome ranch. He showed me he had like a movie uh premiere in his backyard. What a what a pro setup. He had this big uh you saw it, Casey? Did I share it with you guys? I, I heard him talking about it when you guys oh, yeah. during that interview. I'll send you a picture. He's got a big like monitor, or not monitor, big screen, and he's got all these black tables and black chairs and black stuff outside. And he lives on the side of a mountain, and I, and over the mountain is the rest of the mountains in like the valley. And he's up on there in in Colorado. It's so beautiful. And his house is all made of wood, like handcrafted and everything. And he's there with himself and his dog Sam that he talked that he makes fun of me about with the story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's awesome, man. That. Uh, speaking about his film festival leads me into a question that I had for you. What are the rules with that? Are you allowed to enter your film into any film uh, festivals or like indie film fe film festivals or anything like that? Being that I'm it's told, a fan film, I'm told that we are, but I there's got to be some kind of rule like you're you're. I'm thinking like you're saying that you, it doesn't qualify in certain ones because I'm assuming they're original. So, but I was told from. Um, um, Cody Newton, the director of photography, that we can. And I know Vengeance was entered in a couple too, but Jeremy Brown wasn't like super proactive at it. But uh, I'm going to try to be whatever, whoever wants to accept. You got to pay to be in those. That's the only problem. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, speaking about uh, Terry Kaiser, let's get into the next star of uh, the movie. Someone wants to know Wade Fuller, how great was it getting to work with Lar Park Lincoln? Wade, I know Wade. Phenomenal. She she actually showed up on set the day before. Did you meet her? No. Okay. She showed up on set the day before she was supposed to, and she's like, "Hey, what's up?" I'm like, oh, hey, "You're here." So, uh, but I I was talking to her on the phone a couple times and everything, so kind of broke the ice. She's from Texas. She's a you know real girl, so uh, <laughs> she's not you know super dip, like you know oh you can't say that kind of thing. So um, when I saw her, it was great. I hugged her, and then we were doing the scenes and i was in there with him dude and that's when i i told the story before man i had this moment bill you'd like this i'm just sitting there i'm looking at her and i'm looking at terry kaiser and then i'm looking back i'm looking at my script and then reading it and they're turning like what am i supposed to do here what am i supposed to feel and i'm like uh, well, you're supposed to be upset here you're supposed to do this and that and you're you're very dominant and you're evil and then, then, then and i remember opening the door joe caban remember caban the photographer <laughs> joe caban was out there with riley and then i opened the door i go this is fucking awesome <laughs> I closed the door and I went back in and, and, and they were reading it. And Laura was asking me, what's her motivation? I think I told the story before too. And I was like, I, I, I looked at her, I go, this is, this is your whole life. And she goes, okay, yeah, I understand. It's been 30 years. I haven't seen Jason's my whole life. I said, no, this character, this moment, your career, this is your whole life. And she's like, yes. And I was like, what did I say? <laughs> I went back to my seat, dude. I was just so like in the moment, you know. I was, I'm a salesman, so I just kind of got into it, you know. So it was great, though. Great. That's like probably better than Steven Spielberg has ever said to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was going to get yelled at, you know. Wow. You are yeah. a direct. You are a born director. Oh, thanks. It, I, it's a salesman for me, you know. And I was a football player. I get hyped up with stuff. I'm a big hyper, so it's almost. I felt like she's almost asking me. For energy, in a way, you know. So I was like, oh, I'm going to give it to you. This is why it's like Rocky when he fights the Russian, and that Mac says to him, the last round, "This is your whole life, your whole life, Rock." Because he's fighting for Apollo. I'm getting goosebumps. He's fighting for Apollo and everything, and that always like stuck with me. You know what I'm saying? So that it just came out. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah, oh sure. man all right so jason pollock he has uh quite a few fan questions here that will probably wrap us up 
first off, how did you come up with the idea? For the Rosebud. Yeah, Rosebud. Um, Jason was shooting Vengeance 2. Originally, I was going to be... In, I mean, we were talking about shooting Vengeance 2. Most people don't know this. I already spilled the beans. I was supposed to be in Vengeance 2. My character was supposed to live the prisoner because you never really see me die. You just hear me scream. So uh, it was the whole story was kind of like around me and all kinds of stuff. And one thing happened, then another. Then there was some drama uh, outside of me. And I was like, you know what, dude? Don't even worry about it. And he's like, yeah, we lost a few actors that really were particular to me being alive and making sense. Why would I be in the woods alive and how? You know? So anyways... It didn't work out. And I was like, don't worry about it, dude. You know? So then we said, no, I, the, a bunch of actors were going to be there, like Sanaya, him, a bunch of people. So I'm like, dude, you said you were shooting a week and then you were down a week and then you were up a week. I said, what if I grab the actors for like two days, three days and do this 20 little 30 minute film? And he's like, yeah, okay. Meanwhile, I never wrote the script. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Then I go and I start talking to Sanaya and Jason Brooks says, yeah. And we start going on and on. And then I wrote like a little bit of what I would do with Tina. And then people are like, why don't you try getting Laura? Now, remember, I don't have a script. So so uh, I go to Laura and I go, hey, you think you want to do this? And uh, she said, at first, she was like, no, because I because what I wrote was stupid. I was like, oh, he's got a cameo sitting in a chair. And then I was like, oh, my God, I, I fucked that up. So I went, I went back and I wrote all night the next night, I think. And I come up with this whole thing with her and why and the history and so on and so forth. And... Um, she and I and it was Dr. Cruz, but I didn't think I'd ever get him. So it would just be a man walking, you know, and you would shoot it shoulder to ass, kind of, you know, and we could put a shirt on him and nobody would know, you know. So that was the whole thing. And she loved it. And then she's like, Well, I think we can get him. And I was like, Really? And then we got went and got him, and then we went and got Kevin, and then I wrote the script. <laughs> so I nobody even knew. I didn't even have, I mean, I had all the ideas. But I never really put it out into paper, you know, and I never wrote before. I didn't know what final draft was. I didn't know how I'm supposed to write. And there's a format and I messed it all up. I would send it to people like, oh, it's stupid. You're messing that up. So then I figured out the format and did it all, send it to them and small changes, like I said, with the words and stuff. I like calling someone by his name every time. And they loved it. Then I sent it to Terry, Lar, Kevin. Everybody seemed to love it. So uh, I was like, wow, that's amazing. So um and then we went, and Laura said that she's approached, I don't know, dozens of times about a script for part eight, you know, after seven, and she didn't like any of them. And she wrote a script that was saying that the, the studio didn't like. So, dude, Bill, it was like uh, being in these films is one thing to write a script and have them say they love it and I'm coming out. It's like, I, something's got to fall out, like the ceiling, something's wrong somewhere. Like I'm waiting for like the joke, you know what I'm saying? So it, 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 it just worked out. And we're so lucky to get like Casey winning, you know, same thing with Ken Slate. Like I'm so lucky that all these people that win these raffles are like really cool dudes. You know, I didn't even know Casey was that cool. Cause I was scared shitless about him with the smoking. <laughs> he, he's like, Hey man, you might even have to shave bro. And I'm like, no man. Cause you got the hood and, <laughs> and the mask on. You should be okay. Can I smoke? And I was like, dude, you met Sean. I'm like, dude, it's his house, his family. I'm like, I don't think so. I don't know. Okay, man, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm not like great around people. So yeah. like, I get like really nervous. So like, yeah. me not getting high is like, it was really tough for me. You know what I mean? And I'm like, a really good family environment, right? You had a good time. Oh, it was awesome. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Made, I mean, it's not. It's not anyone else ever. It's me. Like I'm a fucking weirdo. <laughs> I like the uh, blooper footage when he was high, swinging at machete, kept hitting himself. That was pretty good. I mean, at least I didn't we see got that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your director Scott. I, 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 I'll give it back to you. I stole it. Okay, did you, Casey. Did you see the bloopers we played during the show? The death curse. No, I missed that. I yeah, jumped they, on late. Yeah, we showed a, a blooper reel that I. I mean, we have this huge blooper reel, but we gave them like four takes. It was it was Terry, me, then Terry, then Kevin, or something like that. So it was pretty cool. It was funny as hell, though. We have a lot of good stuff because Joe Joe Caban had the GoPro all the time behind the scenes. Yeah. I did see something in the group chat the other day that you sent. Uh, am I allowed to say that with uh, Jason? What happened to Jason's hand? I said it last night in the uh, I've been interviewed every night in that huge interview with all the Jasons. I, I told it so you could tell the story if you want. Dude, or you want me. So, Bill, he Jason, I think, told the story on the last episode that we had where how he cut his hand. 
but Peter actually sent us the footage the other day. And maybe if you if you let me, maybe I could put it yeah. into this. But if not, it's no big no, deal. Go ahead. So go ahead. I guess I wasn't there, but I get did you guys forget that that was the real machete or no. so first of all, the gloves on him are literally they're that thick. You no, know, they're I like them. you figure like you could never cut through that. You know, it's like almost impossible. Well, there we're so busy and we have so many machetes. Well, certain machetes are dulled down when I order them. So those machetes are the real machetes from part seven, right there. So the handle's the same, the metals. Everything's the same, so you have to dull them down. Well, one of them we needed to not be dulled down because I had we used it to have them chop something. You know, it's like to scare somebody, you slam it into the wood, you show it's real, and then the next scene, you you know what I'm saying? So, well, somebody, you know, everyone's doing a million things. Somebody took one of the sharp ones and uh, welded it onto this thing that this guy has on with a machete through him. So the first take is you grab it and you pull, and it doesn't come out. You know, and then the second take is. You unweld it, you put it there, and then you pull it out. You put a dummy where he was, and now you have a whole machete, and you pull the machete the backwards way through the guy. You got you to take both takes and then put them together. So he goes to do the first one and slide his hands up, and he's tough as hell, and he slides his hands up. I'm literally right here on the director off screen from him, and he just looks like this, and they go cut. And we didn't want to get like stop the movie for any reason, you know, because we didn't, you know, we're so far behind and I'm sleeping. So he opens his hand and he look, hey, look, and he opens his hand and that shit is that thick. And he cut through all that and he cut all his fingers right through the the inside of the knuckles and all the blood was pooling up in his hand. And and he just he looks at me, he's like, don't say nothing, like oh, don't say it. and he squeezes his hand with the blood so nobody else sees it and he goes on and does the next scene. Pretty cool, right, <laughs> dude? Watch, I, I watched that a few times after you sent that. I was like, th- how hard he had to have been grabbing that yeah. machete blade. Yeah, and yet now, get- well, think about it. If it's a real one, you know, it's pretty. And, and now when you see him pull it, you can imagine, like, holy yeah. shit, that's actually slicing him right there. And he doesn't even twitch or nothing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. I, lo- I love yeah, the toughness tough, it. He's a tough dude, man. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, I squeezed out a couple pints of blood, so you had a little bit more prop juice. But you know, <laughs> yeah. dude, I went back and watched our first interview. I watch it. I have a clip on my phone of our first interview. I look at it all the time and I laugh when I ask you if you wore underwear or not because Jason was naked and I asked if your guys' nuts were rubbing. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to Jason. I'm like, what you, I'm like, what, what do you what do you wear underneath? He's like, uh, nothing. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah. I'm like, what do you do? He's like, I just took my dick down my leg. I just get in the suit. You know, I'm like. Tuck your dick down your leg. I'll be your dick. <laughs> Dude, and so the, the day that I was there, when I got into the suit, like it, he had cleaned everything. Like everything was alcohol, all alcohol down and everything before. So it was like still a little wet when I, when right. I got into it, you know? Right. I was done filming my scene. And I mean, I was in the costume, what, like a couple hours, right? Right. You know, for the short amount of thing that I did, I, I was in the costume for a little while. Jason, like after after I was done, you guys filmed more scenes with Jason in the suit. Oh, yeah, he There's don't care. no fucking way he could have cleaned no. that fucking suit no. properly. And he never cleaned it again after you. That thing was in the in, in the guest house where I was. I was in the main room and there was a closet. That thing was hanging in there. And I'm man, I got a do- nose like a dog. And uh, and I opened the door. What the f- is that? And it was this shit just sitting there, sweating. It. You know, it's, it's just like fucking soaking in. You know, his fucking balls and his asshole and everything. <laughs> you know that like, the case he took it off and he put it on. He's like, wow, this smells like Drakkar. He took off. The best is Casey. Like I said, Casey had those glasses on, dude. So he's got the whole menacing shit on with the hood, and he turns like, "Hey, man, what's up?" <laughs> I've never seen Jason with glasses on. You know, I'm like, "What the fuck is going on here?" Oh, our gentle, smiley giant. Yeah, he's all happy and shit. Yeah, yeah, that was fun, man. All right, so uh, Jason has a few more questions here. You did answer one of his uh, questions. He asked, how did it change over time? You kind of explained that, how you changed the the script a few times before you actually even wrote it. Yeah, we actually, uh, to add on that, we actually, I, I got rid of five people the last few days. And I we replaced our Tina 10 days before, two weeks before. Yeah, and Jessica. Big deal. 
I was I was in the what what do you call that the dailies or whatever when you watch yeah. the stuff from the day before I was in the oh you were in there I was in the room when uh, she was watching her stuff from the day before yeah and it was a, a scene where she was crying and yeah it's just amazing, she's amazing. like she's never acted before ever ever I got 165 166 entries of videos of people reading the lines and she by far. To me, was number one right away. I was like, "Dude, this girl's phenomenal." She doesn't even know Friday Thirteenth. She doesn't even know like what we're trying to do, and she was just great at it. So, and you saw her like she's just like, "Hey, what's going on? Hey, you gotta cry, bang, cry," you know. And it was just that's not easy. I mean, David McMahon and her. David McMahon is just, to me is just phenomenal, like different level, awesome. and then her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're lucky we had yeah. that. Yeah, together they. Yeah, that. I mean, I I really am looking forward to seeing this. So. Jason would also like to know how did you craft your Jason and which performances of Jason were you thinking of while writing the script? Only one dude, uh, part seven. So Kane Hodder, not, not even close. I mean, that, that look is the best look ever of any Jason. It's the most menacing, the most rotten, the most evil, the most strongest and most like upset. Kane Hodder to me is best role his best performance is seven. Uh, we bought that outfit from Marcel Charlie from Horror Costumes. It's a part seven. Mine's a little different because in part seven, the building blows up when he was on fire. Doc at the end, he's actually burnt. So my Jason's a little more burnt, his clothes and his skin, because it's actually after seven. So some people are like, it looks a little darker. I'm like, you're right, because it's after the fire. So 100% Kane Hodder, 100% the part seven look. I didn't, I didn't never want to change that at all, except for that one thing I said. Which you is actually have masked at any point because they put a lot of special effects in, in the unmasked version of Jason in part seven. Are you gonna unmask him? He's well, maybe you should even say, Is he really? No, he's, he he's wakes crazy. so so in at the end of part seven, um, the building blows up. Jason's uh, Tina's father takes Jason, pulls him down. If you keep watching towards the end, John Carl Beekler, who's the director and who's also the um special effects guy, picks up the broken mask, goes like this with it, and then they show Tina and Nick in the back. So he can't have the mask when the movie starts. He's got to not have a mask. So in the beginning, he doesn't have a mask for a while, and you see all of it. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's because you only had the open hood, Casey, right? Yeah. Yeah. Open hood, where like you know you can breathe and eat and drink and be normal, and then you yeah. got what Jason had, which was a motherfucker when he had to put that thing on. He's blind too. He oh shit, Casey's blind and he's not wearing any masks. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine when what I take my glasses off. All got? right, man. Well, why don't you uh, tell everyone where they can find your Indiegogo, all the links, everything? Um, yeah, well, obviously, it's it's just Friday 13th Rosebud on, in, on Instagram and Friday 13th Rosebud on Facebook. But what's really going on the last, I think it ends Saturday night, is uh, the Indiegogo. It's called the Rosebud Indiegogo Legacy Campaign, where you can get anything. We still got this. These Jason, check this out, dude. Ugh. Jason Brooks signed machete. See now, Bill, that's a real sharp one. Yeah, I That'll cut you. So that's what he. I'm scared to even do it. That's what he. And he remember he grabbed it trying to pull it out. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll wake you up in the morning. So we get, we got <laughs> that. <laughs> and then uh, we got the the rosebud mask. So this is a fiberglass mask that, that's super. Look how thick that is. So and that's part seven. It's actually so thick that the crack is real. You can run your finger in it. So that's the part seven broken with with the with the crack that Casey wore. Man, these are the real leather that was made and from part seven. This is an exact mask from that by fiberglass wow. mask. So normal masks are like 80 bucks, 100 something bucks. These masks are like 200 bucks. But I mean they're 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 man, they're right on everything damaged. This is when he fell in the puddle, you know, when the house landed on him. Every single damage. I mean, look at the grooves right. Where is it? Right here, the pitting and stuff. Hard yeah. to see right there. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, all that. It, it's an art yeah. for making the, the right Jason mask. And, and one of the things I can even see there, you got everything. You got the, the axe, you know, in the head. It's like one of the things I've always appreciated about the franchise is even though every group of people that picked up the Friday the 13th show next was different than the, the previous group, they still were like, but well, we have to remember some things like the axe. You know, wound is still there. You know, like the, the the deformation went away. You have the crack going down. Like that's a beautiful touch. Those little Thanks, things, man. I'm sure the fans really notice. Thanks, because because it's it's a part seven mask, which is my favorite mask. But like, how do you make it different? And part seven, by the way, was the last one 
to put all the damage together. By eight, it was a brand new mask that he grabbed the yellow one on a boat. They still put the crack in it, but it's a whole new mask. But so I'm like, well, what, how do I do this? How do I do the mask? I'm like, well, the mask was broken. So I'm friends with the guy who makes the masks. And he, he, I had to make me a magnet version once that had three magnets. So you could wear the mask and you could unmagnet it. So like when it broke. So then I said, hey, your mask is so thick. Can we make a rosebud mask? And I, I drew it up for him. Like, can you put the crack in it, but not really crack it? And he's like, yeah. And then I'm like, we'll tell the story that they put it back together and yada, yada, yada. And that's how that came about. I think it's so cool because to me, it's my favorite mask ever. And now it's got this cool crack in it. So, and that's the same crack at the end of seven. This, we studied it, the exact lines to make it exact. So pretty cool. Yeah. And, yeah, and I got to say, cool. this has been bothering me the, the whole episode. Those guys that are shitting on the movie, those guys that are that are being dicks, you know, Victor Miller and Sean Cunningham are in a lawsuit. We haven't had Jason in, in all this time, and we're huge fans. Right. Like, dude, Peter, I'm serious. Like, I'm thrilled that you're doing this. Oh, it's thanks, the man. only way that we get any of this stuff. So anybody who's shitting yeah. on this, you can call me. At me, bro. <laughs> At me, <laughs> as they say. I love I it, man. Donna, Bill. I love it. And man. Donna Dewana from our last episode who, who said she couldn't stand me. At me, Donna Dewana. <laughs> well, you gotta give me this. You gotta give me this story yeah, before you I, leave. For me, it's silly. It's just, I don't oh. get negative feedback. Now that I've said that, I'm gonna get nothing but negative feedback. Yeah, now you know how it is. You know, that's just the way it is. If people can some people hate Kane Holland. So it's so, just the way it is. I'm used to it. I, I used to like if it was a couple of years ago, I, I really calmed down. Jason Brooks calmed me down. Like in the beginning when we were doing vengeance and people would talk shit, like, fuck this dude. I'm like, let's fly to his house right now. Fuck it, kill him. And then he's like, you got to chill. Jason's like, dude, you got to chill out, bro, man. Everything's good. Him and Casey, like, are the same. You know? So uh, <laughs> I, like, learn to – it's part of – if you can't deal with that, like, I'm sure that, you know, Tom Cruise, half the people hate him, half the people love him. It's just you got to deal with it. It is what it is. It's almost like a, um, a badge of honor. It means, like, you made it. You know? I can't That's stand I Tom Cruise, by the way. Yeah, he is great, though. I mean, come on. <laughs> the Top Gun, too? You're not gonna watch Top Gun too. Yeah, he yeah, is. We're, we're excited for yeah. Top Gun too. Yeah, yeah Tom Scarrett on the podcast. Did you? Oh, yeah. yeah, we had Tom Scarrett on, and everybody was like, "Who died in Top Gun Two? Who dies? Who dies?" And they're keeping it a secret. And Tom yeah. came on. He's like, "Oh yeah, it's Iceman." <laughs> we're like, "Dude, that's a big scoop. You're not supposed to say that." But I, nobody I'm, picked I'm, it up, and I'm now fucking, I'm pissed. This. You just fucking told me now. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> and you want to you want to hear something else crazy about that is since that episode has aired tom scarrett has not been on any social media whatsoever you his, think he got in his, trouble his twitter and instagram facebook everything has stopped so they cut him off i i mean that's the only thing i can think of well you sign a, a you sign an nda so he basically could get in trouble right I'm pretty sure they want that out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. would think the first thing we'd get is a cease and desist. Hey, take that down. Like, we didn't even get that, so I got to think that it's never even made it to the studio. Yeah, we're a it's so hard there. though. Like so, some of these actors, I think Peter, what's him call it from um, Guardians of the Galaxy? He's leaked some shit at certain times. Once he gets out, it's on like a thousand different platforms. How do you tell everybody to take it off? Right. It's almost like too late, you know. The, the, have you seen the new Spider-Man trailer? Yeah, the one that leaked. Yeah. And that was yeah. the actor who was in the movie leaking it. Like who leaked it? I never knew who leaked it. Uh, uh, Alfred Molina, right? He plays Doc Ock. He's like, I'm in the next oh. Spider-Man movie. And everyone's like, no, no. Everyone at Disney's like, shut the fuck up. I can't believe you're saying this. He's like, like a seasoned actor. I can't believe he let, he did that. Yeah, every once in a while, there's just some actor who just fucking doesn't yeah. know they're not supposed to say shit. And they're just getting that excited was, on interviews. That, and they're like. You know, that was that was fucking awesome though. When you saw the arm, and you're like, no. And then I thought, okay, it would just be another guy. And then it's him. And you're like, oh shit, they got him back. And I was like, that was great, you know. Yeah, well, if it was spoiled for you, it wasn't so great. Right, right. What else leaked? Um, King Kong. What? Some other big movie leaked like three days before, not too long ago, too. Mm, I forgot. I, I forgot what movie it is. It's so hard. You know, imagine how many people are on set, how many people are editing, how many people are doing special effects, and then the trailer, and, and, and it's so hard to not release. I mean, these people are paying you, like like how the newspaper will pay you if I leak footage of like Beyonce's kid. You know what I'm saying? And they'll pay you to get the money to release it. So it's tough these days. Yeah. Well, I read a lot of entertainment news, and it's, you know, everybody wants the clicks. Everybody wants the headline that's going to get you to click in and they make the money. Right. But, you know, it, some people will spoil the movie. 
right? Yeah. So I don't want to hear this stuff. I didn't want to know that. I accidentally yeah. read it in the headline. I was like, well, thanks a lot. You know, I, yeah. I, I couldn't avoid the headline. It was in my feed. Yeah, so I didn't want to know. It, it, when the Marvel movies were coming out, like the first was three or whatever it was, the, dude, they had people like on the sets with drones, like going over the Hollywood sets. You'd see these weird pictures of like, you know, because they had drones that they could take. They have long telescopes. Like it's, it's like almost impossible to hide everything, you know? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That shit shouldn't be allowed. Yeah. Real quick, before we wrap up, I wanted to say this at the beginning of the episode, but I forgot. Peter, uh, last week I told a story about how I was on, you know, I traveled for work. I was on my way to Fairbanks, Alaska, and there was a drunk lady sitting next to me, like hammered drunk. And I actually had to call the flight attendant. She kept like shoving my arm. She kept like on, on the plane, like I'm not a mask enforcer. But right. on the plane, you have to wear a mask. Everyone yeah. does. You know, I have to wear it. You have to wear it. So this lady kept, she constantly had her mask down, shoving my arm, hammered drunk. I forgot to say this. And I was all worked up last week when I was telling this story. And I forgot to tell this. The reason, the one reason she got up to talk to a flight attendant is because after I wouldn't help her plug her phone in, she, when she, you know, started verbally abusing me, Bill. She went, she was like leaning back in her seat, and I could see that she was trying to take my picture. Yeah. So I said, oh. Wait yeah. a second. I said, Hold on, let me pose for you. And, I gave her <laughs> a middle and she, took it. she took my picture, yeah. And then she went up and showed the flight attendants. <laughs> <laughs> but they already knew she's a mess, right? Yeah, I mean, then they came and got my side of the story and everything. And I, I mean, she was obviously overserved. Like the the lady in first class kept constantly just giving her bloody marys every time she would pass her, and they they made her move her seat eventually. And that's Dude, my I had favorite part of the story because some guys just sitting there enjoying his flight, and all of a sudden, sir, I hope you don't mind. We're going to put a new passenger next to you. Uh, uh, what? Yeah, what could be the harm? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm taking your picture now. Dude, I had a similar one going to Seattle. We were in first class, and this she was nice and she was like kind of hot. And she was like in her 30s. She was an alcoholic, dude. She had six drinks from Chicago to Seattle. Jesus. That's that's not that long. No. And and she was here. Then, then the guy's like, ma'am, enough, you know. And she would take it, like you said, she was taking her mask and throwing it under her chin. And just like leaning in and talking to me and be like, my mother calls me a whore because I had an abortion. I'm like, holy cow. <laughs> so um, that then she goes, so the guy cuts her off. And then she, I'm like, she's like, you got to get me a drink. And I'm like, I'm not, honey. Listen, I have been in trouble a lot in my life. <laughs> and I, you cannot get me in the middle of something like this. She said, tell him, like, I'm, I'm going to ask him for the drink. You're a mess. What are you going to do? You're going to drink it. He's going to see you. You know, in your first class, they're right there. <laughs> you know, so so I'm like, uh, we're not doing this. So I'm like, honey, and she's like, just do it, be a friend. I'm like, I'm not doing it. You, whatever you want to do, you want to get up, knock him out, and steal all the alcohol. I don't give a shit. You're not putting me in the middle of this. I'm just doing my flight, whatever, dude. She got up and got into a fight with the guy oh. about not serving her, and the, they had to like sit her back down. And then she was like still talking to me, and she like sleeping on my shoulder. And, and dude, the crazy thing is, we landed, and they were like debating whether to let her go because she had like a rental car ready for her. And I'm oh, like, this God. girl's gonna drive unbelievable you know yeah it's crazy like bill said l last week you know that's what they're supposed to be preventing now and you know in first class there's you know obviously they don't give a shit you know no. the, the flight to fairbanks where I, I forget exactly where i was coming from but it was a six and a half hour flight it's a long right. flight to be sitting next to somebody that's hammered and like you know you're trying to yeah. mind your own business watching fucking vikings yeah, yeah, and you at two seventy five, two eighty. What do you What do you weigh? Uh, two thirty two, buddy. Dude, but this chick's like a hundred pounds, yeah. and she put out like six drinks in like an hour. I'm like, man, she's wrecked, you know? Yeah. yeah so yeah, it's just fucking be smart out there, people. Don't get fucking smashed on a plane. I, I got, I got Sit one more for me. you. We don't have to put this in, but. I'm staying quiet on all the drinking stories because I'm usually the guy on the plane that's fucking drunk and getting in trouble. So I'm for I'm, real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was a Peter. big drinker, but I had no actual real bad plane stories. I've always had pretty good planes. Uh, maybe a crying kid. That's probably the worst. You guys, both of you, have these nightmare stories. Last week, Peter, I'm telling Bill this story on the podcast about how the lady, you know, 
She, I, I, first I said, have you ever looked at someone and just, you know, knew they yeah. were hammered drunk? And Bill's like, yeah, me in the mirror. <laughs> 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 and then, like, I keep going on with the story. And he's like, I'm not seeing anything wrong with this situation. <laughs> No. There's someone out there now on a podcast telling a story about Bill. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, sure there uh, might be. So last <laughs> week, Bill Bill made a, a – you said that if anyone could find the video, that there possibly might be a video of my excursion to Fairbanks. But I can guarantee you there is a photo out there that this lady took so if anyone can find it does that hundred bucks stand for the photo bill absolutely a hundred bucks yeah i'll, I'll make it a thousand dollars if somebody <laughs> finds this video i will give you a thousand dollars so she went to fairbanks from where i'd have to look that up i think i was in maybe chicago like it was no maybe yeah. dallas okay you know what you got to do is there's probably some site and some place like uh, nightmares on planes or like plane stories from hell, something like that. I bet you, if you go in there, you might find one with her with the view of the finger or something. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking great. Yeah. I already hate I, dude, I was on, I was on a plane when I went to training for Chicago and uh, I, Casey, you probably had some, this is the worst one. Like I'm not scared to fly or we're going to die. I can't do anything about it. This one, holy shit. We left and there was a storm in Chicago and the, the guy gets on the, the pilot and he goes, Hey, he goes, there's a massive 100-mile-an-hour um, shears, wind shear, which is the worst thing for a plane because you can do everything perfect, and the wind shear just throws you off. And he's like, and it's a rain and a storm. He goes, if we don't make it to Chicago, we're going to reroute to Buffalo. I'm like, we don't, if we don't make it, what the Buffalo. fuck does that mean? Yeah, yeah, and I'm leaving from New York. So what the fuck is that, like a U-turn? So, so um, I'm like, well, wh what point are you flying that you say we're going to make it or we're not going to make it? Like, I don't get it. Now – so now he talks about that. Now we get in there, fucking turbulence like crazy, right? Boom, it's raining, it's blackout, lightning, fucking everything. And now the people are shitting and they got the windows open, but it's black, you know, because it's so dark and everything. And you could tell this pilot could not see shit. So he's flying off his instruments. And so it's like, I'm sure you had this, Casey. You could tell he you can't see shit. He's just looking altitude, trying to fucking hope he lands. And everyone's looking, looking. And finally, when it, I mean, literally feet before we hit the runway, you could see. And <laughs> you ever have one of those? Yeah. <laughs> Ah, like shitting and everything. Oh, it was it was crazy. I'm sure you had one of those, right? Yeah, you people get so scared, man. It's like they're doing their job. I mean, they. they I'm right. sure they've done this before, right? Right. They don't want to die either. But you never know. You have, you have so little control. It, the fact that he set it up as horrible, I think, kind of added to the anticipation. Yeah. You know, if we just landed and did a couple hops, we'd kind of be whole oh, shit. But it would have been like. You know what? I got it now. I remember. I actually do have a shit story. You, you have, you've talked about it enough. I remember. Your storm story reminded me. So we were flying one time back from, we were actually in Hawaii, and I, I don't remember where we were when this happened, but we're watching the movie with Harrison Ford and Anne Heche. Remember when they get, they're in a plane, the plane goes down. We're watching yep. that movie on the plane. All of us. Everybody. <laughs> it was the movie. It was the in-flight movie. And as the plane starts going down in the movie, and Harrison Ford's like, yeah. We're going down. Hang on. Put on your belt. Whatever. Like, we're yeah. getting hit by lightning and shaking around really bad. And I hear somebody yeah. go, ah! like, screaming. <laughs> and, and I'm with my ex-wife at the time. She goes, this is bad, right? I said, it's not bad until the stewardess looks nervous. I was right. And right. she we looked over, and, and she looks terrified. Absolutely terrified. I'm like, oh, we're in trouble. And I what are you going to do, God, though? What are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're stuck. You're in there. You're and you're most likely going to die right away. So that's okay, right? <laughs> People know, I've watched it's like a couple years. I've watched hundreds of plane crashes and deaths. And you think, oh, it doesn't happen that often. Yeah, the fuck it does. You just don't hear about it as much. Dude, there's ones where they're like one of the levers was the flaps, right? Well, on the next series plane, that same thing was like fuel dump. And the, <laughs> the guy like came from another plane, didn't know, dumped the fuel, they fucking crashed, everyone died. But you're you're dead when you're you're on a fucking plane. You're in an aluminum fucking tube, an aluminum fucking tube going 500 to 700 miles an hour. If you're in a steel car and you drove 60 into a wall that didn't move, you're dead. You're going 700, 500 with an aluminum tube. Everybody's dead. But you then there's dead. those freak accidents where Artemis Pyle survived that plane, the Leonard Skinner plane crash. 
Yeah, but that was a small Cessna. Yeah. So it's that's a little still, It's still a metal yeah. tube. Yeah, but but Cessna's actually uh, I'm get like mastered at this. They're aerodynamic, so when they lose engines, you can still glide. Uh, a plane game, it's a brick. You're just straight down. You have to be facing the air, and it has to turn the turbines and all that shit. It's not aerodynamic. It's so fucking heavy. It just it once it dies, it just falls like a brick, and that's why some of them you see just hit and fly, and then it blows up. So even if you live now, you're fucking on fire. Fuck. I can't wait to fly on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> During that same one I was on, that it was real crazy. A priest was next to me, and he had the thing on and everything. We were talking, everything like that. And I was telling him the story about how the planes crash all the time while we're on the fucking plane. And uh, he he was like, "All right, let's just stop talking about this," you know. And I said, "Father, don't worry, man. I mean, you're one of the boys, so he ain't gonna kill you. So I'm okay, you know." <laughs> You're fine, man. You're Artemis Pyle, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> All, All right. right. Well, with that with that said, I don't know what we're going to call this episode, Casey, because we talked about 9 billion things. Yeah. Plane crash. Welcome to episode 37, where we talk about plane crash, Marvel, Jason, uh, talk about everything on this show. Uh, it was a good time, man. Yeah. But we yeah, also have to edit this show, time, so it's too damn long, it's going to take me forever to edit. So let's wrap this thing up, and I'll get Yo, to Casey, you going, you going to premiere, Casey? Absolutely, yeah. Bill should oh, be oh. there too. Oh yeah. fuck yeah! Because you guys got—I give you the table. You can do whatever you want. Yep. Cool. Are you going to sign autographs? No, I am. Oh, I don't know. If anybody asks, I mean, I wouldn't sit at the table and w- waste your whole time waiting for somebody. But if they ask you, do it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah, I think Joe has some eight by tens that he's going to hook me up with. So, uh, yeah, do it. Cool. Start him. Go into your head. Look at you. <laughs> you already moved out of Reading, Pennsylvania. You you go to. Sunny Florida, like a like a big shot. The official yeah. muffler man, baby. Yeah. But I thought from going from Pennsylvania to Florida, his haircut would get better. But in fact, he has like the Pennsylvania haircut right oh, now so instead now. of like the Florida haircut. <laughs> 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 He's got like the iron workers. Like I got home and wore a fucking hard hat hair going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to make a trip back to Pennsylvania and get my haircut. Why can't you cut it down there? There's no barbers I trust in Florida. Oh, okay. I got a, there's a, there's I got a, a, I got a guy. Okay. He's your man. He's my man. People are like that. Same with their beards. They only go to the one guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. All right. So, All right. Peter, real quick before we wrap, one more time. Plugs. Where can people find you? The movie, Indiegogo, all that stuff. Friday 13th, Rosebud. Uh, you can find us on, uh, I'm actually on Twitter. I'm on um, Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on, hold on a second. If, nah, fuck it. There's some horror one that I'm on, but don't even worry about it. And uh, Indiegogo, that's the big one. Go to Indiegogo, Friday the 13th, Legacy, Rosebud Legacy Campaign, Indiegogo. Three days left. We have signatures from Laura Park Lincoln, Terry Kaiser, Jason Brooks, so on and so forth. Blu-rays, behind the scene, weapons, masks. Everything we talked about, it's awesome. Everything I get, you guys know, I just throw it back into the premiere or back into Harry Manfredini or back into something else. So it's only going to help the film. So I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, man. This has been awesome. And we're all looking forward to it. Thanks. Thank you both. Thank you.